all right YouTube and Skyrim communities. So in this video I wanted to cover each and every Daedric artifact. There's actually an achievement or trophy for getting 15 Daedric artifacts. And the, in total in game there's 18 Daedric artifacts. Uh, the skeleton key doesn't actually count towards this achievement. And there's uh, two different quests that depending on your choice you get one of two different items. So there's 18 in total. Skeleton the key not counting. So let's just get into it. We'll cover each and every lo uh, location and quests on how to get them. First up is the Azura Star or Black Star. And you get this from the quest of the Black Star. You get it at the Shrine of Azura south of Winterhold from Arania Lineth. She has you go and get the broken uh, Azura Star and you're supposed to fix it. Now once you return it, you can give it to her and she'll fix it and make it the Azura Star. And you have the option to make her a follower. Or you can give it to Nelikar at the Inn in Winterhold and he'll make it the Black Star. The difference between these two items is that the Azura Star is only White Souls or non-sentient beings. And the Black Star is supposed to be Black Souls and sentient beings, which is like humans and stuff. But it's actually uh, maybe a bug or something, but the, the Black Star can do both, so it's just the better option. Also, something else to take note of is that Black Souls are always Grand Level, so it's definitely the better item if you're going to be doing enchanting. Next up is the Dawnbreaker, which is a one-handed sword that you get during the quest line, the Break of Dawn. Now, you can pick up this quest by either visiting the Statue to Meridia, which is west of Solitude, or after level 12, you can find Meridia's beacon in random chest. Now, it's not to me, there's nothing super special about the weapon. It just does, like, fire damage, and it does additional damage to undead creatures that are, like, droggers and vampires and stuff. It doesn't really say that to me, so I don't ever really use it. Looks cool, though. Next up is the Ebony Blade, which is a very interesting weapon. Now, you get this from the Whispering Door quest, and in order to get this quest, you have to get it from, you have to talk to Hulda from the Banner Mare in Whiterun, but you have to be level at least level 20 and have completed the Dragon Rising quest, which is one of the main quests where you fight the first dragon. Now, what's so interesting about this weapon is it gets stronger as you kill friendly targets. So, it, it, at first, when you hit people, it'll absorb up, it'll absorb 10 health from them. But for every two friendly targets you kill, that increases by another two, up to where it absorbs 30 health per hit. Very interesting weapon. I've all, it's one that's always intrigued me. I've always liked it. It looks fucking cool. There's, I, there, there's only very few weapons in the game that have like that kind of katana look. It's just a really awesome weapon, and it's kind of fun. Also, it's a two-handed weapon. Forgot to mention that at the beginning. Next up is a very interesting piece of armor called the Ebony Mill, which is a heavy armor, and it actually has nothing to do with the Ebony Blade, though you could use them both together. Now, you get this from the quest Boethius Calling, and now there's several different ways to start this quest. After level 30, you, the book Boethius Proving will start spawning in random locations. You can get it from there, or you can kill a Boethia follower and get the book off of them. Alternatively, you can go straight to the Sakelma Boethia and just skip all of that, which is probably the best bet. Now, what's interesting about this piece of armor is that anybody that gets near you that's an enemy takes 5 points of poison damage. Also, it tells you that you move more quietly, but the muffle effect actually makes you completely silent, which is awesome for sneaking. And I imagine if you get too close to enemies, if they're, if they're enemies already, that it would automatically do the poison damage to them, and that would probably alert them to your presence. I can't be 100% on that. And then, while you're sneaking, you get this, like, shadowy look to you, which is pretty fucking cool. I play in first person, so I'll probably never, don't really ever see it, but it is still cool. Next up is the Mace of Malak Bal. And you get it during the House of Horrors quest in Markarth. It's a one-handed weapon, and you get it from Vigilant Tyrannus. You get it pretty soon once you enter Markarth. It's a pretty strong weapon. It, uh, whenever it does stamina damage and magic damage. And then anything that you kill, it'll fill a soul gem. So you're hitting all three. You're hitting their stamina, their magicka, and their health. Obviously, because you're hitting them with a weapon, you're hitting their health. So it's actually a very powerful weapon. And if you're into doing enchanting and stuff, the filling soul gems will be useful as well. Like I said, it's a one-handed weapon, so it's not useful to you if you don't use one-handed, but other than that, it's pretty damn strong. Next is the Mask of Clavicus Vile, and you get this during the quest A Danger's Best Friend. You gotta find the dog Barbus out by Falkreath, which is, this is a pretty popular quest because the dog is unkillable, so once he's following you to, and you're supposed to take him back to Clavicus, you can just go continue with your questing and exploring, and just have that additional follower who can't die and can help you do fights. Anyway, the Mask is a heavy armor, and it gives you 20% better prices, a, your species increased by 10 points, which should actually make your prices better as well, and your magicka re regenerates 5% faster. Now, during the quest, Clavicus wants you to get the Rueful Axe for him, and when you bring it back, he wants you to kill Barbus. Now, in order to get the actual mask, you're going to have to not kill the dog and give the axe back to Clavicus, and he'll give you the mask. The Rueful Axe isn't a Daedric weapon. You think it would have been. It's a unique-looking weapon. It looks pretty cool, but it's not actually a Daedric artifact, so if you want to get this, you're going to have to not kill the dog. Next up is Merun's Razor, and you can get this during the Pieces of the Past quest. 
And in order to get it, you have to be level 20, and a, le a courier will come up and give you an invitation to the museum in Dawnstar from Silas. Or you can walk around Dawnstar, and you hear the NPCs talking about the museum, and that'll give you the like miscellaneous objective to go check it out. Anyways, in order to get it, you're going to have to, at the end of the pieces of the past quest, you're going to have to kill Silas. And that's how you get the dagger. If not, he'll keep the shards, the pieces of the dagger locked up in his museum. And all it does is it has a 1.98% chance to kill any opponent in the game outside of Merak and Karstag. So, not exactly the best ability, but at the same time, possibly the best ability. Like, if, you get, if you're lucky enough, this could be, like, the best weapon in the game, you know, because you're going to instant kill everything. So, it is a dagger. Dagger swings super, super fast, so I guess you get an opportunity pretty often. I still would probably never use it. Next up is the Ogma Infinium, which is a pretty wicked-looking book. Now, you get this during the Discerning the Transmundane quest that you get from Septimus Cygnus, who's, like, north of College of Winterhold. And you can come to start the quest at any point, at any level you want to. But there comes a time where you get this rune lexicon for him, and if you are below level 15, you cannot continue the quest. And then afterwards, once you reach level 15, I think a courier will come and bring you a letter, and then you can go back and continue the quest. Now, what the book does is once you get the once you finish the quest line and get the book, you get to read three different chapters. There's the Path of Might, the Path of Shadow, or the Path of Magic. And depending on which chapter you read, you will get a plus five to six different skills. And that they are, if you choose the Path of Might, you will get a plus 5 to Heavy Armor, 1 Hand, Smithing, 2 Hand, Archery, and Block. If you choose Path of Shadow, you'll get a plus 5 to Light Armor, Speech, Pickpocket, Alchemy, Sneak, and Lockpicking. And in Path of Magic, you'll get a plus 5 to Destruction, Restoration, Conjuration, Illusion, Alteration, and Enchanting. So obviously a very, very powerful item, very powerful digital artifact to get because... This will give you a lot of points into your stats. And they go, your, your stats increasing by 5 counts as like nor, like it would normally if you were leveling them up. So, because if you level up a skill, that's how you uh, level up in the game and unlock your perk points and stuff like that. So this will almost always give you at least a level, if not more than that. So as, the earlier you do it, the better. Next is the Ring of Namira, which is obviously a ring, so you can wear it with anything. And it doesn't really affect your heavier light armor. And you get it during the quest, The Taste of Death, which you get from Miola in the Hall of the Dead in Markarth. Now, in order to get it at the end of the quest, they'll tell you to eat Virulus. And that's you have to do that or you don't get the ring. And what it does is it gives you a flat plus 50 stamina, but it gives you the ability to feed on corpses. And whenever you do, you'll get a plus 50 health and you'll get a plus 50% health regeneration. Now, I could not find how long the duration lasts for those the two health buffs. But they last if you take even if you take the ring off for however long the duration is. Now, obviously, if somebody sees you eat a corpse, that you'll get a bounty and you know people attack you or whatever. Um, still pretty cool. It's something I've always liked and kind of mess around with whenever I've got it because it reminds me of Fallout with the cannibalism perk, which is always fun to mess around with as well. Next up, we have the Sanguine Rose, which you get during the quest A Night to Remember, which you pick up from Sam Guevane in any tavern once you reach level 14. Just any bar you come into, this guy will challenge you to a drinking contest, and once you drink. Uh, you'll pass out and wake up in like a temple of Debello that's kind of messed up and you got to clean it up or whatever. Anyways, at the end of the quest, you find out that the, the Sam was actually Sanguine, the, the Daedric Prince. And you get this uh, staff, which uh, since it's a staff, it's a one-handed weapon, so you have the other hand free. And it will summon a Dramora depending on your level. Like, depending on the level you are, it will summon a stronger Dramora, which is pretty cool. Kind of sort of basic, but I mean, if you like having like a, a companion there to fight for you, you can summon a Dramora for 120 seconds that'll help you fight. Next up is a quest that allows you to choose between one of two items. You can either get the Savior's Hide or the Hercene's Ring. And you get this quest, uh, Ill Meant by Moonlight, in Falkreath. You can get it by either talking to Matthias or Sending. And the, at the end of the quest, you'll get either the Savior's Hide or the Hercene's Ring. And the Savior's Hide is a light armor that gives you 15% Magicka Resist and 50% Poison Resist. And the Hercene's Ring is it gives you unlimited werewolf transformations. Because it's, uh, like most powers and shit in the game, you're, it, the werewolf transformation is once per day. But this lets you do it as many times as you want, which is obviously a very strong item. Now, in order to get the savior side, you have to kill Sending at the end of the quest. And in order to get the ring, you'll have to not kill him, obviously, at the end of the quest. So, uh, out of the two, I mean, to me, the ring is just miles above the other thing. Because it's just like basic uh, uh, enchantments, like just some magic resist and then resisting poison. Like, eh, that's, that doesn't seem Daedric worthy to me. Next, you have the Skeleton Key, which is the one that doesn't count towards the Oblivion Walker achievement or trophy. And all it is is an unbreakable lockpick. You get it during the blindsided quest for the Thieves Guild in Riften. And it's nothing special. I mean, it's pretty cool. Like, the downside to not... If you complete the quest, you get rid of the Skeleton Key. So if you don't complete the quest, you can keep it. 
but that prevents you from finishing the Thieves Guild quest line, which is actually a pretty fun and good quest line to complete. So that's just kind of up to you what you want to do with it. But again, it doesn't count towards the achievement or trophy. Next up is the Skull of Corruption, which is a staff you get during the quest Wicked Nightmare. You get the quest from Miranda in Dawnstar. And at the end of the quest, you have the option to either kill him or let him destroy the staff. You have to kill him in order to get the staff. And what it does is the staff does 20 damage, but you can increase it up to 50 damage per hit for when you absorb dreams from people. Now, every time you absorb a dream, when you go to a sleeping person and absorb their dream, you'll get five dreams. And you have to do this six times to get all up to the 50 damage. And the the staff does area damage, so it hit multiple targets at once. So it's it's a pretty decent one. One of the cooler looking weapons for sure in the game. Next we have the Spellbreaker, which is a shield. Which is the only Daedric shield uh, in the game. And you get it from the quest, the only cure. And there's two ways to get the quest. You can get it either from one of the random afflicted, once you're level 10, it's just a random encounter. Or you can go to the Shrine of Periite and get it from Kesh the Clean, but you have to be at least level 12 to get the quest that way. And all it does is while you're blocking, it throws up a ward that blocks 50 Magicka damage. And it's actually, it sounds so basic, but it's actually really, really strong for fighting dragons and dragon priests and stuff. Any kind of, uh, like, uh, spellcasters or anything. Also, it is a heavy armor. Next we have the Volandrung, which is a two-handed warhammer that you get from the quest of the Cursed Tribe. You get it from Adab in Largashbur. <laughs> Those orc words are hard as hell to say. And all it does is it hits for 50... It, on every hit, you absorb 50 stamina. And this is really good if you are a two-handed class because their power attacks take a lot of stamina to do. So every hit you're doing gets you 50 stamina back. So it's actually pretty damn good. And last up, of course, is the Wabajack, which is probably the most fun weapon in the game. You get it from the Mind of Madness quest in Solitude from Dervanen. And he has you go and, like, you know, try to bring Shieldgrath back. Anyway, it's a staff, and it has the ability of whenever you hit an enemy with it, it can potentially change them into another creature. It could hit them with a, with a destruction spell. It could even heal them. So, like, it's completely unpredictable. Nobody, I don't think anybody would really ever use this as a serious weapon because you can't control what it does. And so it's really hard to make a class around that, but it's just for fun, and it's, very, it's a very fun weapon if you never got to use it. Turning somebody into, like, a chicken is a blast. And that is every Daedric artifact in Skyrim and how to get them. If you have any questions about these quests or anything, feel free to leave a comment and ask me. I'll reply as soon as I can. Um, these videos take a little bit longer to make than my typical just commentary videos with, like, you know, some gameplay with some commentary over it and just kind of talking about whatever. And so I appreciate the thumbs up on these videos for sure. And if you're not subscribed, I definitely appreciate that more than liking the video. Definitely helps me out. Makes me want to make more videos uh, to help you guys out. Later.